Hey everybody, this is Griffin McElroy, your Dungeon Master, your best friend, and a third thing that I will think of later at the commercial break. Uh, thank you all for listening to The Adventure Zone. This is going to be a special episode because uh, Travis and Teresa had a baby. And we are so happy for them. Teresa and the baby are both doing very well. Um, and so what you're about to hear is one of three episodes uh, that we have ready for our sort of uh, uh, group paternal leave. Uh, because um, my wife Rachel and I, uh, we're expecting a baby also uh, in early December. Um, so we are going to put out this episode now. I'm so excited for you to hear it. It is our Boston live show. Uh, that we did at the Wilbur Theater. It was a sold-out crowd, and it was one of the best nights of my whole life. Everybody there was so, so, so spectacular, uh, and I was really happy with how the story turned out. Um, my hope is that the next episode you hear, which is going to go up on November 17th, will be the second episode in the Suffering Game arc that we just started. Man, that title's so... It's it's so brutal to say. Um uh, but that is my hope. Uh, and then uh, once uh, I, I am also a papa, uh, we will have two more episodes ready for you that I'm also so excited to get to. Um, but this uh, this just had to be the first one that we put out uh, for, for this parental leave block because I can't not – you can't not have heard it anymore. It's too important. Um, I think you're really going to enjoy it. Uh, and like I said, uh, the, the next episode should be a regular one uh, if, if things calm down a bit and we have some time to, to put some play some play time on the books. Um, but for now, enjoy the Boston Live Stunt Spectacular. You know we're just going to play Dungeons and Dragons, right? <laughs> All right. You've heard the show, right? You guys, um... That was the loudest thing I've ever heard in my day. Yeah. Uh, these costumes are wonderful, and thank you, boys, for the, the hard work that went into them. I did... This is a fun story. Just have to help Dad change into his costume backstage, which was a horrifying look into the future. There's actually a small, a smaller person in there that's controlling the arm for Dad. It's like Please a be careful, situation. Justin's drink with your giant wooden oh my hand. God. If it touches me, I'm burning. Is this there anyone down. here who has not ever listened Son to the of show? A bitch. Stop it. You're is- gonna be so confused. <laughs> okay, time out. We need to take a vote. This is gonna be untenable. Yeah, you're going to need to remove... Oh, can you even remove it? Is it strapped underneath your clothes? It's strapped on underneath the clothes. Okay, yeah. listen. My dad deals with that. Um, so uh, there are a few people here who haven't... Listen, we play Dungeons & Dragons, and, well, they play it. I run the game. Do you guys want to talk a little bit about your characters? I thought that's why we had the thing with the... Yeah, that's a good point. The thing. My name is Justin McElroy. I play Taco. He... Thank you. Thank you. It's a collaborative creation. And uh, he's a wizard. And I don't know. He's down for whatever. Uh, <laughs> unless it's dangerous, in which case, uh, Taco's good out here. And my name is Clint McElroy. And. <laughs> Are you just going to keep interrupting with these outbursts? Because <laughs> it's cool. Yeah, I do that. We've I've got played, all night. We got all night. I play uh, Merle High Church, who is a uh, cleric, <laughs> an elf. It's, it's funny nope, because nope. it's so true. Dwarf. Yep. He's a dwarf. Don't help him. He can. He has to do this on his own. Pre. Uh, 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 cleric. Yep. He does clerical work. He likes long walks on the beach. Okay, Travis, what do you do? And I am Travis McElroy. <laughs> and I play Magnus Burnside's the fighter. He is... The hammer! The hammer. He's known as the hammer in some small circles. Uh, he is a human. Uh, he has yeah, a pet Yeah, humanity, yes! Like, That's did anyone us. else hear human? <laughs> Uh, he has a pet goldfish named Steven who is alive and well. 
Uh, and he pulls the robot's arms off. Hey, let's. Uh, um, what do we? That's a hobby. Would it be possible for us to get a bit more monitor on yeah, stage? I'm having a hard time hearing my my. They family. real horny for this one, and uh, it's hard. <laughs> they were way hornier it's than hard. we anticipated. If we could hear ourselves a little bit louder, that'd be amazing. Thank you. Ask and that's Griffin McElroy. Hi. And I, I play the part of Douglas. He's a gnome thief. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's get started. Hell yeah. yeah. Wait, um, can I, Travis, can you hear me, my assistant, Cavassier? Yeah. And uh, Ginger Ale? Tra- Tra- Travis just bought a big box of beverages out here. <laughs> it's a prop. It's not real. Yeah, that's a magic it's podcast magic potion. Happens. <laughs> yeah, that's ah. I'm going to keep this down here so I don't block line of sight because we're going to do, if this is an indication of the level of this Cavassier is any indication, we're about to do some connection, you and I. <laughs> Uh, so this, uh, this is going to be a little... Uh, Lord. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Travis, tell him what that is. Isaac, your love boat bartender, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, Travis, Holy make sure you shit. Uh, build Wait, a wall so nobody the, can see uh, you. And Dad's got Diet Coke. Can you show him the one bottle, the Andy? Oh, yes. This is uh, from uh, Columbia Brewing. Is that, yeah. Andy, are you here, Andy? Andy from Andy. This is the uh, Burnside's Brew Smithery. Uh, Magnus Burn Cider that was made for us for this show. <laughs> Patent pending. It says it's uh, it says it's an 18% alcohol content, but really it's just five. <laughs> that, was a... <laughs> that was really good. That was funny. Call, yeah. Because <laughs> you fucking cheat all the time. <laughs> all right. So this is going to be a a side quest. This is not in the current arc that we are uh, currently exploring. Uh, and uh, let's get going. Uh, so, Merle, Magnus, and Taco, uh, you all find yourselves in the bustling metropolis of Neverwinter. Uh, it's early spring. I think this would probably come right after Crystal Kingdom, right before the, the 11th hour, which we're in right now. Um, uh, so, it's early spring, and I'm guessing that means it was just late fall because they just skip winter entirely. Hi, Travis. Oh, thank you for the beverage. <laughs> Um, and you've been summoned to Neverwinter by a letter you received a couple of weeks uh, after the whole Crystal Kingdom debacle. Uh, and the letter was sent by a name that you recognized, but it was one that you haven't really thought of in months. And it starts off, Dear Casey. <laughs> <laughs> Something we can, a reference we can all enjoy. So topical. Six or seven got it. Where are my sectogenarians at? <laughs> No, the, uh, the letter was actually sent to you by one Jess the Beheader, oh. uh, who you befriended in the... Well, let's see if Dad can even... Oh, yeah. Do you remember Jess yes, the Beheader? Yes, okay. I remember him. He, uh... No, wrong. Uh, Jess the Beheader wrote you a letter. Oh, that's fun. And says... Uh, it couldn't work out better. Great. Oh, boy, this is going to be a long night, folks. This uh, is top-notch humor. You're not going to get these rhyming jokes anywhere else. <laughs> Uh, the letter reads, uh, Dear Magnus Taco, and they put the little spelling symbol, like maybe they spelled it wrong. They did. SP? Uh, uh, Dear Magnus Taco and the other one. <laughs> How are you? I am fine. Wow. It's nice to catch up like this. So, I need a favor. I need a big favor. You all really kicked ass on that Rockport Limited mystery. And I could use your help solving another murder. And if you're feeling generous, I could use some help preventing a second murder. Uh. The first murder was Brock Thickstone. (laughs) It was on a porn set. (laughs) (laughs) The first was Brock Thickstone, my Battlefest partner, who was killed in cold blood after our Supreme Champion qualifiers last week. The second is me. It would be very cool to not get murdered. (laughs) Brock was killed in cold blood in the locker room here at Chaos Stadium, which is actually a really nice stadium, despite the name and despite the fact that somebody was recently murdered here. (laughs) His body was found holding a bouquet of flowers, he really liked flowers, that he had received just after our match the night of his death. Neverwinter's Justicars discovered the bouquet had been cursed by powerful magics, although, you know, that stuff is kind of over my head. If you could come figure out who killed my dude and keep me safe through the Supreme Champion Finals, I'd be happy to split the big old prize pool that comes along with the title. Oh, I guess I need a third favor, too. I need a new partner in the ring. 
Magnus, you yeah! ever try your hand at prize fighting? Yeah! <laughs> Best wishes, Jess. And then in parentheses. I'll text her back. The beheader. Okay. Uh, you got oh, her. it. Smiley face. So. Thumbs up. I guess you would correspond. Monorail. <laughs> um, so the three of you took the first cannonball out of the Bureau of Balance headquarters and made a beeline for the Chaos Stadium, which is nestled in the northern outskirts so of the So they're okay with us just like using yeah, company just, like, resources like higgledy piggledy? <laughs> like if we're like late for a movie, cannonball me, baby. <laughs> Maybe it's like that scene in Independence Day where Will Smith steals the helicopter and the guy's like, you can't take the helicopter. And he's like, you really want to shoot me? From Independence Day, you remember that scene? Uh, I should mention that you shared that cannonball with a special guest, one specifically requested in Jess's letter. P.S., it reads, if you're still in touch with him, just a thought, but could you bring the boy detective to... Yeah! Oh. I hate the boy detective. No, you don't. I hate him. No, you don't. What? A, uh, how is he reacting to the cannonball? Uh, he, no, do it in character. He t- he was a champion. Uh, of course do the he was. voice. Uh, well, right. That was, we're in media res right now. Uh, but uh, no, I thought we were in Neverwinter. Hey. hey. <laughs> Vocabulary yeah, joke. Drinking it in. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, you do get a, uh, a hearty, hello, sirs. And standing in front of you, uh, in front of Chaos Stadium, is Angus McDonald, who's a bit winded. Uh, the three of you manage to shake him in the busy crowds of the Protector's Enclave, but he is the world's greatest detective, so we managed to find you. <laughs> Sorry I lost track of you. I looked away for just a second, and you were gone. <laughs> If we kill anybody in this story, does it hold for the rest it of the... It would be a paradox. <laughs> Are, we're unkillable, though, right? Essentially, yeah. Okay, yeah. Awesome. Should be good. No repercussions! <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I managed to find you. I was worried that I was not going to be included on this adventure. Oh, shit. Uh, despite our best fucking efforts. Yeah. <laughs> I want to point out, Justin did that in Justin voice, not Taco voice, so it's not canon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you guys are being really sweet to, to Angus. Um, I, should, I should also mention, uh, today is Angus's birthday. Aww. <laughs> Which is probably how you were convinced to bring him along in the first place. You probably like tore off that part of the letter. We're like, I don't know, man. It just, <laughs> she didn't mention you. I'm sorry. I feel like Magnus got him something. Like something, like a, maybe a carved wooden duck. Okay. <laughs> so maybe that's like all you can actually make. Mm-hmm. It might just be what he's really good at. Okay. It's not like limited, but he knows his strengths. Get him a carved them. wooden stag. That would I give be... him a carved wooden stag. Sure. The little girl who got one of those on Game of Thrones that worked out good for them. We could... That's a different fantasy thing. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the four of you are standing in front of Chaos Stadium, and the crowd is rambunctious. Uh, the the battle fest. Sub- okay, a little bit of fully work from the audience. That was maybe the least rambunctious crowd I've ever heard. Yeah. Oh, we didn't pick. We didn't pick a scrivener. Oh, that's right. We'll be fine. Okay. Uh, we did, last time we did this, we've only done one live adventure zone, by the way. So there might be some rough edges. Gotta show you how good it was. Yeah. Uh, that, that was in front of 125 people who, frankly, didn't seem to want to be there very much. <laughs> uh, that's that okay. is true. It's not a back and forth kind of thing. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of a one. It's D&D, but it's not that interactive. Yes. Uh, so so the, the Battle Fest uh, Supreme Champion uh, uh, finals are about to take place. And uh, ima- uh, the scene I'm trying to set is WrestleMania. Got That's it. the picture I want you to lock in your mind. Uh, the crowd here is rambunctious. It seems like there's far too many people here to fit into any one building. And every single person in the crowd seems as rowdy as any 10 non-Battle Fest attendees combined. Uh, everywhere you look are cosplayers dressed up in, in the spandex regalia of famous fighters. Um, some of those fighters are featured on these large banners which are draped aclo- across the walls of the building. The building looks um, like a very old building that has been sort of uh, repurposed for this. Like it looks, There are these tall uh, stone columns. It looks very like uh, ancient, for lack of a better term. 
Um, and yeah, people are cosplaying. There are signs, so many signs. Uh, Jess's name is all over the place. Um, uh, a third of the signs here say, off with their heads in big block letters. Um, there's a, a few have an image of a crescent moon uh, with the words unleash the beast on them. Uh, some are for a fighter uh, named Queen Sabine. Uh, and uh, the, a few mostly in the hands of some smaller kids uh, who are wearing angel wings. Uh, are championing a fighter named Jeff Angel. Uh, and, uh, and then there are signs for like the diehard Battlefest fans who have uh, you, you've probably never heard of before. Although I should ask you, the Battlefest franchise, which is the WWE essentially, uh, has been around in this world for about a decade or so. Do you uh-huh. guys think your characters have any... Are you guys weirdly secret, like, diehard wrestling fans? I think Magnus probably is aware of it, but maybe not diehard, but definitely like... Knows of it. Okay. That's the least committal answer yeah, ever. Jesus. <laughs> I am aware. Merle knows all the wrestlers from 30 years ago. Okay. <laughs> Before they went pro. Yeah. And it was still back alley wrestling. It's like Dusty Rhodes, the American. Well, it wouldn't be Dusty. Oh, yeah. Rusty Dodes, the American dream. <laughs> Which is shame because Dusty Rhodes is a much better fantasy wrestler name. Yeah, it is true. Yeah. What about Taco? Uh, Taco is only familiar with the television show uh, because Sizzle It Up with Taco, his yeah. cooking show, was on Up Against Them on Basic Cable. Basic fantasy, fantasy Which literally cable. means that these two live events were taking place at the same time in different places in the world. Right. Wonderful. Right. Because <laughs> television does not exist. You've made very clear to me. Um, uh, but you make your way through that crowd and uh, into this, this uh, ancient-looking uh, building uh, you're whisked inside the stage door uh, by a producer who finds your name on a guest list, and inside you see a familiar face. You see Jess the Beheader. Uh, Jess! Uh, the yeah, Beheader! <laughs> <laughs> Middle uh, and last names. Says, uh, hey, long time no see. Are you guys, what have you guys been up to since all the train murder stuff? And more murder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Death, destruction, the usual. Character voices. Character fucking voices! <laughs> Death and destruction, the usual. <laughs> you I, it's more, the one I picked. You just, sounded more Scottish last time I saw you. Death and destruction, the usual. It's a different actor this you time. You sounded less Scottish. <laughs> uh, Jess is accompanied by a human man uh, named Derek Humanman. No, uh, <laughs> she is uh, accompanied by a human man. Uh, who doesn't really have the build of a professional uh, fighter. He is wearing a button-up shirt tucked into some nerdy slacks. Uh, He's got a a big pair of round glasses on. He's got a big bushy beard and an almost perfectly round belly. And I'm reading that now, and I realize it made it sound like he's Santa Claus, but he's not. (laughs) Does it shake when he laughs like a bowl full of jelly? (laughs) Uh, No, it doesn't. Um, Well, that's how you tell him apart. (laughs) Wait, wait, you ever wait, see wait. him fighting and you need to trank one? <laughs> have him laugh. Now you laugh. Okay. Now you laugh. Okay, now you. <laughs> <laughs> He's the clone. <laughs> <laughs> now watch, it jiggles. <laughs> now watch it jiggle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, first row. You, you will get wet. You may get drenched. Sorry. Uh... Uh, so while you all are catching up with Jess, uh, this guy kind <clears> of... <throat> what was his wait, name? Wait, just to be clear, Jess, the person accompanying Jess is named Jeff? No. Okay. It's cool. Derek. <laughs> you haven't asked his name yet, which is sort of a fun me, running theme. Yeah, let me try. <laughs> he, uh, he clears his throat to kind of like make his presence oh. and looks at his watch. Hey, what's your hand, little Kimasabi? <laughs> uh, oh, hey there. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm Merrick. Uh, I'm the CEO here... Um, I, I it just told me that you guys were coming, and uh, it's really nice to meet you, but uh, um, uh, I need you to sign this before you go backstage, and he hands all three of you clipboards sure, with some sure. stuff on it. Yeah. How have the, uh, how the ratings been this year? Oh, real good. We've got, had some really, uh, uh, really savage events. It's been really cool. Lots Better cool recently, fights. probably? Yeah, yeah, I would, yeah, I would say. We got rid of that damn cooking show for yeah, competition. Yeah, about Less five years ago, yeah, we had a big about, upswing, and it's been yeah, a nice... you're welcome. For uh, but uh, yeah, sign this for me. Is your standard talent release NDA merchandising licensing deal? Very whoa, common. whoa, whoa! I, I don't comfortably give up merchandising. That's a weird thing that you'll all learn about Magnus in the next story arc. By, by the way, after the show, there'll be posters, posters. out in the lobby. Make sure you 
no, that's true, though. There are wonderful, you know, are wonderful posters, 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 posters by Carrie Beach. Yeah, the vibe. Thank you, Carrie. Carrie, are you here? Yeah. Carrie's here. Where are you, Carrie? You're not going to see her no matter where she's sitting. Yeah, yeah I, I can't see anybody past the first two rows. Uh, he, he looks at you waiting for you to sign the... the... Oh, yeah, uh, I sign it. Okay, thank you. Uh, 15 years in the future, so he opens up a Magnus Park. Uh, damn and it! Makes, makes 60 million <laughs> My IP! <laughs> uh, he takes a Magnus. Oh, thank you, thank you. Hey, uh, you little boy, little boy, are, are you a Jeff Angel fan? And he fishes out, uh, he fishes out a little... Uh, Please don't talk to our little boy. <laughs> <laughs> He's we, our little boy. We bought him fair and square. <laughs> he fishes out a little angel wing button from his, his nerdy khakis, and he hands it out to Angus, and Angus says, uh, Oh, heck no, sir. I'm no chump Mark. Uh, and he takes it back. <laughs> and I high-five Angus. He says, Oh, sorry. Sorry, kiddo. Well, off to business. <laughs> <laughs> business. Business time for me. And he turns and leaves. Uh, and Jess says, okay, here are the rules. Battlefest Supreme Champion. How many holds form. are barred? None of the bars. <gasps> Whoa! And none of the holds, none of the bars. <laughs> uh, you got one challenger or two partners, me and you, Magnus. We're going to take on four other fighters, which were chosen by a fan vote. If the challengers, me and you, get knocked out or submit during the fight, we lose. If we can knock out or force all four of our opponents to submit, we get to be Supreme Champion. You got it? Yes. Uh, Where do I need to, like, sign up for my wrestling name? Uh, we'll figure that out I've backstage. already got it. Okay. S- sit on that plot. They call me okay. Imorco. What is that? It's Elvish for the bear. And I pull out my bear mask from the, uh, the oh, yeah. pedal to the metal, and I put it back on. I like that. Then he pulls out his dork mask and puts it on <laughs> over the bear <laughs> mask. Listen, Elvish is not dorky, Dad. <laughs> That was totally in. That had to be in fiction. You saying Elvish is not dorky, Dad to Merle. <laughs> and get out of my room. Leave me alone, Dad. Uh, I'm practicing my Elvish. Jess says, uh, "Magnus, I picked you because I liked your moves on the Rockport Limited, <laughs> <laughs> and your body type is pretty similar to my last partner, whose name was Brock Thickstone." No, yeah, I remember. Uh, but Merle and Taco, I have jobs for you too. Merle, if you're willing, we could use a manager in our corner. We could oh, use, yeah. we could use a, a, you know, a hype man, somebody there to, to work the crowd, get them on our side. But you could also support us from outside the ring if you're able. Taco. I have experience. I was in the JCs. I, she didn't hear any of that <laughs> because you didn't say it in a character voice. <laughs> These people paid money to watch a stand and play D&D. The least we can fucking do some character voices. Fine! I'm sorry, by the it's way. It's all right. I can't no. kind of a one way, just <laughs> it's a lot, yeah. unidirectional. And it may be just a physical Especially thing. Especially if you're encouraging my dad. <laughs> I'm going to need you to sit on it, okay? Thank you. She says, Taco, your job is the most important job of all. Go on. <laughs> you <laughs> need to make sure no one sits in this chair. Was that, you a hear that? Two, that was a character Two point? words. That's how we do. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, Go on. I need you on the catwalks up above, keeping an eye on the fight, looking out for suspicious on individuals. On the catwalk? Yeah. yeah. On the catwalk? Okay. Uh, Should I... <laughs> <laughs> Should I shake my little tush on the catwalk? <laughs> you know what? I know we're having fun here. Right said Fred did have some other really good singles you should look into. Yeah, a few minutes later, I'll, I'll hook, hook you up. I got some tapes. I am regretting how I have assigned the most important job. <laughs> no, I'm ready. So there's no doubt in my mind that Brock's death was the result of foul play. I don't know who's responsible, but I figure whoever they are probably wants me dead, too. I need you up there watching my back. Sure, yeah, okay. Cool. Let's, get you, all, let's get you all backstage. Um, and you're backstage. <laughs> The magic of podcasting. Um, and it's really quiet backstage. Uh, there are uh, four private dressing rooms that are all shut, and there are uh, security personnel in front of all of them, uh, keeping them secret from you. Do the um, security personnel look trustworthy? Yes. <laughs> would that be in some, some kind of check I would do? Trustworthiness check. Uh, sure. It's Wow, we're actually rolling dice, and it's been 21 minutes. <laughs> Now, do you have a proficiency uh, in no, it's, trustworthiness? It's not called trustworthiness. It's called insight. insight. Yes. 
That's a 14. Yeah, oh, my God, it really is. <laughs> <laughs> no, they seem, they seem cool. They seem cool. Yeah. Okay. I'm impressed. Uh, Angus, Angus goes over to check out uh, Brock's locker, start digging through his belongings. His brocker. Looking f- his brocker, looking for clues. <laughs> Um, off to one side of this room is uh, another uh, uh, dressing area. There's a, a row of mirrors surrounded by lights. And uh, over by a big, tall wardrobe is an even taller Goliath man uh, who has pitch black hair and a sharp little goatee. Uh, and he's, uh, he's wearing a spectacular tuxedo. Um, and uh, he looks at all of you as you walk in the room and uh, just says, uh, Dante, these are them. And he looks at you and just kind of considers you for a second. And he says, uh... <clears throat> Mo. Oh, come on! <laughs> let, me, let me give you a little insight. Let me pull aside the curtain. Right now, Griffin is running through the databases of voices in his yeah. head, trying to figure out which one have I not used yet. Uh, no, I got it. Okay. He, sa- he looks at you and he says, Mo. <laughs> it just says, Dante, come on. And he says, let me see. And he looks at you, Magnus, and he says, I'm sorry. <laughs> you have a wonderful body. Thank you. But you do not have the soul of a chap. I punch him in the face. <laughs> Roll that. That's an 18. Oh, my God. 18 plus 8, a 26. You, okay, here it is. This is the scene. <laughs> he says, you have a beautiful body. <laughs> But you do not have the soul of a champion. And you just, before you finish, just pop, and it's literally just like, his face doesn't move at all, and he goes, Interesting. (laughs) He he picks up some glasses from the table, and he puts them on his gigantic face, and he just says, What does it mean to you to be supreme champion? It means being strong enough to make the weak feel safe. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> he, says, uh, he says, what about your friends? Can they vouch for you? One of them probably will. <laughs> <laughs> he turns to you, Taco and Marley, and says, is this good-bodied individual <laughs> supreme champion material? What has he done in the past that has been champion-like? By the way, this voice was starting out supposed to be kind of Andre the Giant-esque, and then it took a pivot towards fucking Droopy. <laughs> it's kind of got a lot of Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah, it's like if Hitchcock and Andre the Giant had a sad baby. <laughs> uh, he asked you to vouch for Magnus for his champion qualities. Yeah, it's kind of a one-way thing. Yeah, he's, he's the best. He's, he's really, the best. He's strong. He has proficiencies. Very good at rolling. If Carves a mean duck. Yeah, he car- he's good at carving stuff. I don't understand what you'll need him for, but yeah. I know, I know champion jealousy when I hear it. Yeah, that's what it is, too. Uh, he says, okay, I believe you. I will make you... And now he's Russian. Uh, <laughs> I will he should make... slow down. We got all night. <laughs> yeah. uh, I will make you. Uh, what is your character? What will your. What's your. My name is Imorco. The oh, bear. the bear in Elvis. Yes. Yes, I... uh, That's a sting I have for. Try to get you. My name is Imorco. <laughs> uh, I think he. I think he just like has this big table full of fabric, and he just like throws it up in the air, and just like like a cartoon. I also. Like cutting it I also sewing. want to point out I've been wearing the bear mask this whole time, yeah, yeah. just like talking to another grown adult. It's like I'm a champion. I think he makes you sort of. It's almost. It's maybe half furry. Uh, costume, just like the arms and legs, and the audience reaction to that was maybe the best thing I've ever heard. <laughs> because it wasn't, it was like, <laughs> half like, yeah! And then the other half was like, uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just fine. Don't hate. Uh, and, uh, but there's like, a breastplate on it, uh, and, but furry arms and legs, but also like a breastplate. Are there nipples? It. Good uh, question. There's 11 nipples. 11 yeah. nipples. Yeah! Not where you time. think. And he, you suit up. Um, and he looks at you two. And he says, hmm. You know, you two have wonderful bodies as well. <laughs> Would you like me to make you all costumes just for funsies? I had to 
one's you? Mm. No, this one's for funsies. <laughs> you guys should do it. I love a costume because this arm is killing me. Okay. What, what do you want me to do about you want a massage? Uh, What's the... Wait a minute. Time out. Does he have it? What? The wooden arm? Yeah, yeah. This is after Crystal came to me. Okay. Lost, you lost that bad boy. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, Sorry man. Yeah. <laughs> you would, not would real. You you would, hold on. What would you do? Would you write like a letter like, don't grab that thing that makes you lose your arm and then like seal it and put it in your pocket like Bill and Ted style? It's up to Trav. Why would it be up to I would do it even if I knew what was going to happen. <laughs> uh... He asks you if you guys want I wrestling. rolled a 16, if yeah. that matters. Do you all want wrestling costumes as well? Or do you want to go... Yeah, go for it. Yeah! What, what, do you, what are you thinking? Um, you'll actually be like, you'll actually be out there. Like, you'll be ringside the, the manager. So you will... It may make sense for Merle to also have a persona. Something with uh, stripes? <laughs> stripes, man. They're very slimming. You're... <laughs> You just want to be Stripes Man. <laughs> yeah. For those of you at home, he is nodding. <laughs> Emphatically. I think he does yeah. the same thing, and he just makes you, like, the sleaziest-looking suit you've ever seen. I like... Uh, and, uh, like, maybe 12 pounds worth of fake, like, chains, and the suit is pinstriped, and he's like, uh, I will call you... Pinstripe. <laughs> That's good. How come he gets to pick his name? Because well, you, you didn't, didn't pick say yours. anything. I wait, 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 pause. Pause. Give me a pause so I can jump. Okay. In thing. Pinstripe. I like pinstripe. Yeah. That's, ah. <laughs> I think it's very appropriate, and it's very slimming. Magic boy. Magic man. Listen, Magic Mike, here's my character, and this is kind of a meta one, so hang in there. His name is Tough Greg. <laughs> now, here's, here's Tough Greg's thing. He's kind of... T-U-F-F. Yeah, that's yeah. good. He's kind of an everyman, uh, and I want his uniform, and this is when you're making it, I want it to look exactly like the crew you have working the show. So the theme of it would be... The theme of it would be like, he just got up there like, what's Tough Greg doing? But, but otherwise, indiscernible from everybody else in the show. Like, you wouldn't raise an eye no matter where you saw this guy, Tough Greg. The character of wrestling. <laughs> that I think he says, uh, I have the perfect idea of how to accomplish this. Impress me. And he just walks over to one of those security guys who is perfectly taco shaped and just grabs his shirt and pants and pulls, but it doesn't rip them, just the clothes come off. <laughs> um, okay. And the security guy's a pro, so like he doesn't move. <laughs> doesn't blink an eye. <laughs> And he just hands them to you, and they are your perfect size. Perfect. You ought to at least cut the sleeves off, because that's, that's very in. No, Marvel. I want it to be indiscernible. <laughs> but then they're always going to confuse you with the... Ah, uh, uh, yeah, all right, okay. Ah. Uh, uh, I see. You guys are all costumed up, and uh, before you, the, the fight begins... How do we look? You yeah. look fucking ridiculous. <laughs> But uh, in a good way? Yes, sure. Uh, Jess says, uh, bef before you, you go out there, she says, oh, one last thing. And she opens up a locker, and she says, uh, Magnus and, and Merle, you're going to need to put all your weapons in here. What? <laughs> I'm not so good without them. <laughs> I know, it's Battle Fest rules, though. Uh, but not the gloves, right? That's part of my costume. The clothes? My gloves. Yeah, no, all of it's... I got a tree arm. That's super great. Hey, what happened there, by the way? You had two... We'll tell you later. Some okay. of a bitch cut my arm off. That's what hell I happened. I saved your goddamn life. No, you cut it off. By Pam's name. Okay. Um, I uh, give Rail Spinner a gentle kiss. Okay. 
and I place that, that into the locker. I hope to God. Yeah. Okay. I, and I place him gently into the locker, and I say, "I'll be back. Don't be scared." You hear it go. <laughs> what? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, um, and I hang up. Let's see, Phantom Fist. Yeah, shit. Uh, this is going to take all night. My short bow, and I'm doing this from memory, and the Fletcher, can I keep the Fletcher's mitt? That's no not a gloves. weapon. It's a no gloves policy, I put up too. the Fletcher's mitt. Do I get to keep my shield? Uh, probably not, no. Steve is not a weapon. <laughs> he is an agent of love. Uh, I'm going to move things along here and just say, you upload, you, uh, you okay, put all your I put everything up. in there. Uh, Taco, you're allowed to keep your umbrella, and Merle, you're allowed to keep your Bible, your Extreme Team Bible. It's not a weapon, it's a book. Oh, yeah, show everybody your... You hand. mean this extreme teen Bible? <laughs> also on sale in the lobby after the show. Not true. Uh, not true. That's oh. a lie. Thank you, pal. Uh, you can order them. All right, let's, let's move forward to Battlefest. Uh, I'm going to split the party up. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, it's a few minutes till showtime. <laughs> Ooh. It's a few minutes till showtime. Merlin and Magnus, you guys are at the top of the entrance ramp behind a curtain. You can hear the crowd. They sound just as rambunctious as they did outside. Taco, Jess is taking you to a service elevator, uh, fulfilling our contractual obligation to have an elevator in this live episode of the <laughs> show, Adventure Zone. And you've taken the elevator up to the catwalk of the Chaos Stadium. And below, you can see this sold-out crowd that you've been hearing chant backstage for the past hour. Uh, there's easily 20,000 people here just all just screaming their brains out. What are they chanting? So we're, we're, th- we're looking at kind of a, an arena. So- we're looking at kind of a, an arena. No, calm down, okay, please. Uh, yes, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it is an arena, um, like an indoor. So the catwalk would be sort of like a network of. Yeah, like so the catwalk like is thing. actually two long beams that intersect with two other beams. Going How high up? Is it real, real it's high? About, no, it's not that high up. It's like, a, it's about. 25 feet up. There's some lights hanging off of it over, over the ring. The ring, by the way, is a hexagon shaped. There's six sides, six okay. points. Uh, Can the boy detective go up there too? Uh, no. The yeah, boy what's de- Ango doing during uh, all the this? The boy detective, uh, I'm sorry, sirs, I couldn't find any good clues. I guess this one's uh, just out of my hands. Anyway, I'm going to go get you a You looked big- in the, there was nothing in the I locker? I got to go get a big pretzel and watch the show because... <laughs> It so is, this is a cameo. It is uh, okay. in my birthday. So, Ango, I am dedicating this fight to you. If I win, you won't die of some terrible disease. <laughs> I give no such reassurance. He, sa- he says, am I sick? <laughs> Not yet. Give it time. Uh, so, so, Taco, you're up on this catwalk, um, and uh, you've just gone up the elevator. Did it... Um... Did it, uh, uh, uh... Did it what? Are we, like, does the match start? No, not yet. Okay. So can I go up to the catwalk? Do I have to be up in the catwalk already? Or could I still be, like, backstage hanging out? Do you have a fun scene you want to do? Okay, yeah. No, you haven't, you haven't gone up yet. Uh, we don't rehearse this show <laughs> ahead of time, yeah, Quick retcon. This isn't a fun scene. Uh, if in my, um, outfit... Yeah. I want to go to where their weapons are being stored. Okay. Uh, and I am going to. What's the situation with the the place where are they locked up or what's up? Uh, yeah, they're locked up in Jess's locker. Uh, you guys are are. Let's say you guys have already gone out to like the entrance ramp, so you're not really in the locker room anymore. You still are. Did Jess's we only lockers. check our weapons, or did we keep all our other stuff? You kept your Bible and your pants okay. or whatever. Did I keep nitpicker? You. Did, but you're not with Taco. We're getting hung up. Quick, quick, do uh, something, do something. Yeah, I want to, uh, so I'm going to open her locker. Okay. With a uh, knock. Okay. Bing. Uh, and then. Is that I'm, what you do? Hmm? Is that the sound of At makes? home? Uh, no. I'm going to cast Le- Leoman's Secret Chest, which lets, uh, creates an exquisite chest that I can hide on the ethereal plane. Does okay. it say the word exquisite on your card? Yes. <laughs> All of Taco's spells On are On my cards, it says exquisite. Yes, and you always roll 20s. Yeah, um, so yeah, I throw everything into the exquisite chest and stuff in the ethereal plane. Okay, and what do you do with the, what, what do you do with the chest? You'll find out. Okay, cool. <laughs> Foreshadowing. All right, let's fast forward back to where we were. You're up on the catwalk. You can see this crowd below. You're about 25 feet up from the ring. Um, and uh, o- over this uh, this series of it's like a hashtag shape, like two and two intersecting. Gotcha. Um, 
don't laugh at me making a hashtag shape with my hands. I was very vulnerable. By the way, that's hashtag, hashtag shape. Um, I was very vulnerable in that moment. Um, and uh, as you come up the elevator, uh, you see a young human man who is uh, operating a spotlight, but he hasn't heard you over the roar of the crowd. He's shining his light onto an MC who slides through the ropes of the ring and walks to the middle of the stage and grabs a hanging microphone that's being slow, slowly lowered down by this spotlight boy. Um, uh, Merlin Madness, you are on the entrance ramp to Jess behind a thick curtain uh, that's kind of muffling the MC as he gives the three of you your grand introduction. And Jess says, uh, anything else you, you two need to know before we get out there? What's our entrance music? Yeah, like, what are we doing? Well, you guys could just come out to mine. We've got the... Okay. Um, oh. Who are we facing? Are there any weaknesses? We can't. Any... We don't know. That's the whole thing. It's a secret fan vote. Cool, cool. Um, oh, I thought of something. Yeah? She says, um, we're heels. Do you know what that means? No. We what? make people feel better. She says something like that and then pushes the two of you through the curtain onto the top of the ramp. And for a Wait, second, hold on. Does that mean we're jerks? And for a second, when you walk out to the ramp and the spotlight is on you uh, and this music is playing, uh, the spotlight's shining on the three of you, there's silence and then there is a deafening wave of booze. Yeah! There we go. And Jess, Jess is just... I don't think they like that idea, Griffin. Jess is... Jess is just fucking eating it up. She's actually, you see now that she has uh, uh, a bunch of paper mache severed heads that she's like throwing into the audience like, yeah! We'll be I, selling I, those after the show too. I want you to know, I, Travis McElroy, love this. Yeah, yeah. Magnus Burnside's hates this. Yeah, sure. And she holds up her hand in the air and her soul-bound axe that she had on the train arc appears in her hand and she just like buries it in the top of the ramp and like runs down to the ring. Uh, I all... kind of jog after her. <laughs> like, uh... yeah, what, what do you all do going down the, the ramp? Like, and I'm kind of doing claw motions. This is a hands. hostile... This is a... <laughs> I'll do falsy hands. Yeah, right. I'm doing falsy hands. Just doing jazz hands. Step the whole jazz way Jazz hands. Hey, I'm pinstripe. Do That's little, right, fits for pinstripe. Do a little perfect. grapevine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for you dancers out there. You make your way down to the ring. Um, talk <coughs> As they're entering. Okay. I'm, uh, I've cast Arcane Eye oh. and am having it hover uh, around the crowd. I can move up to 30 feet with an action, but since we're not technically in combat, sure. I'm just kind of want to hovering it around just to give me another set of eyeballs to rely on. Okay, yeah, no, that's good. Uh, you don't necessarily see, I mean, everybody's like cosplaying and it's like a crazy wild scene, but you don't see anybody like holding a dark orb and like <laughs> chanting into it. Um, uh, but you do uh, catch the attention of the boy running the spotlight. Uh, and this is just after they've made it to the stage and they, they take up a couple minutes just like soaking up the booze. Well, that sounds bad. Um, <laughs> That's what we did backstage. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, this boy says, uh, hey, you're not supposed to be up here. Hey, it's me, Greg. <laughs> Well, you're wearing my clothes. That's kind of uh, ironclad. There's no way it's the same guy. I'm not wearing his clothes. Because he'd be naked, he'd right? Be naked. I meant my uniform. It's the only clothes I have, so I just call this uniform my clothes. <laughs> it's not funny. Why are you laughing? It's the only clothes I have. Do you have... Uh, well, I'm the only one supposed to be up on the catwalk. They call me catwalk boy. <laughs> They call me Gerald, the catwalk boy. <laughs> well, uh, as I always say to the wife before I hop into bed, make room for Greg. Because <laughs> uh, Greg's here. <laughs> so, uh, Greg, what, do you have your uh, ID That's badge? That's my handle. Greg, do you have your ID badge on you? Sure. <laughs> Push him off the catwalk. I cast Charm Person. <laughs> There's my ID badge, you uppity so-and-so. Uh, what it, I get to roll on that, don't I? Yeah, with no. the charisma check of Catwalk Boy. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, I roll a wisdom saving. He's charismatic. He's just at the wrong line of work. Uh, I attempt to charm him. No, no, sorry. That's even better. It's a wisdom saving throw. All the wisdom of that walk boy. That's a natural 20. <laughs> Catwalk Greg just says, no, (laughs) not anymore, (laughs) not on his walk, not again, and he reaches, uh, uh, he reaches into his pocket, he says, sir, I'm going to have to ask you to call me, stay put, and he starts to pull out a, sorry, did they arm him? Uh, he's actually pulling out a stone of far speech uh, and uh, is, is starting to bring it up to his face. What do you do? Hold on a second. You guys kill just... him. I'm not going to kill... Why, why? Why? I'm not going to kill Catwalk Boy. It's a game. <laughs> he's not a real Life person. Life and death is just a game to Clint McElroy. You should have had these prepared before. Well, I didn't know what fucking magical scenarios I was going to get into. Uh, I am going to cast. Just draw a random one. Kill him. What? Just draw a random one. See how that goes. Kill. No, I could do that. Um. Okay. Uh, I cast gust of wind. (laughs) Holy shit. (laughs) Let me do a little foley work for you. No, that's okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I cast Gust to Wind on him. It's only 25 feet. It'll be fine. What is that? Uh, uh, I don't have that one in my, my uh, dock. It's my a dock. line of strong wind, 60 feet long and 10 feet wide. Blast from you in a direction you choose for the spell's duration. Each creature that starts to turn in the line must succeed on a strength saving throw or be pushed 15 feet away oh, from that you. Ain't, that, ain't, that ain't him. <laughs> Uh, and you know there are people yeah. underneath you. What? Uh, that's a ten. Uh, no, so sweet, sweet catwalk boy. Uh, uh, are you blowing him towards the ring or just kind of into the crowd? Uh, I'm blowing him into the crowd where they can catch him safely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a collective dexterity throw for crowd. Uh, that's a fourteen. Okay. They kind of catch it. Here. <laughs> and he actually comically drops his stone of far speech as he goes. Uh, and uh, uh, the stage goes dark. And it's dark for a bit. And then you hear from the stone, Gerald? Gerald? Where's the spotlight? Gerald? Go for Greg. <laughs> hey, it's Greg. I heard you got a spotlight issue, my man. Greg, where's Gerald? Went out for a dookie break, brother. You want me to take the spotlight or what? Yeah, just get a light on my fighters. He went out to smoke a fantasy cigarette, and now you got Greg on the horn. Just just turn the light on and shine it on my fighters. You got it, Boobala. Any direction you want it aimed or what? The fighter words. Hey, no need to yell, my man. We're all friends here. <laughs> you got Greg on the job now. <laughs> all right, I'll fire up the spotlight, which I know how to use. Because you're Greg. Let me do a... Um, is it a magical spotlight? <laughs> no. Is it an electrical spotlight? Careful. Uh, no. <laughs> Everything you say becomes canon. That's right. Is it a canon? Uh, okay. It's a, yes. Uh, I'll do a investigation check. To, to see, see if you can figure out how to yeah. work spotlight. <laughs> That's a 15 Yeah, that's plus. good enough. Yeah, you know how to use spotlight. It's a fucking light that you point at things at a certain spot. Yeah. Hey, if you've ever run spotlight before, raise your hand. No, and it's, I, it's I, actually... I see what's going on here. Okay. It's an art, right? Wow. It's an people art. people at a D&D show. It's an, an art. It's an art. Did you right. do it for a living? No. 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 That was the... It is a hobby. All right, all right. We got we to right? move. We've been going like 45 minutes. We got to really okay. get some... And some... all of a sudden, all the lights go out. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to describe now the four entrances of the fighters you'll be facing off against. I'm just going to try and get through it as fast as possible so we can get into this thing. Uh, the lights go dark. This, a, a shaky spotlight comes up. 
And uh, uh, a burst of flowers, of roses, comes from the ramp, uh, b- from behind the curtain. And out comes a woman wearing a red tricorn hat that reaches out to a sharp point forward. She's got a yellow feather sticking out, and uh, her costume almost looks like fencing gear. She doesn't have, like, a fencing foil or anything like that. Um, but that is kind of her style. And the audience is, like, losing their mind for this fighter. Uh, there is a... There's a, there's a sign that unfurls that uh, 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 heralds her as Queen Sabine. Uh, and uh, she's moving down this ramp with attitude. She's got a pair of sunglasses on that she just kind of flings into the crowd. Uh, like David Caruso? Not that, when the fuck has David Caruso ever been like, here comes a pun. <laughs> the delivery of said pun. <laughs> you know, I didn't have to be here tonight, Griffin. <laughs> Uh, Jess, Jess leans over to you and kind of hunkers down because uh, you're standing like by the, the corner of the ring uh, and she says, uh, okay, shit, that's, uh, that's Sabine. We used to be tag team partners but then she got injured so I got a new partner and then she got salty about it and now we're kind of bitter rivals. What's her deal? Uh, she's very fast. Just Why don't you leave her to me? Magnus, you just focus on the, the other folks that come out that curtain and Merle, you just keep this in the fight. Cool. Once, all, once all six of us are in the ring, the fight's going to kick off. So it's um, us two versus three people. You got it. Yeah. Cool. And then the lights go out again, and there's a, an explosive pyrotechnic display and the sound of electric lutes that are just getting shredded. <laughs> and they are producing some truly gnarly butt rock. And uh, a tapestry uh, rolls down from the entrance ramp, and it's got a bunch of gothic symbols and a large flaming skull. And the name of the fighter who is emerging from the curtain, and that name is simply... Death Man. <laughs> he, uh, he's wearing a significant amount of grease paint, but you can still tol- tell that he's a bit past his fighting prime. Uh, also evidenced by the fact that it's taking him quite a while to get to the ring. Uh, once inside, he removes his black trench coat to reveal some big blaggy, uh, baggy black pants and a black tank top. He's got some big old guns. Is he bigger than me? Um, yes. And I think his, his like promo is he just like points at you, Magnus, and he points at his open mouth. And he rubs his belly. I just flip. I flip him off. <laughs> um, is I Death think, Man a one that uh, Merle recognizes? Uh, yeah, I think you. No, uh, no, this is this is this is a different franchise probably than the one that Merle uh, was a fan of. This was you he were like that WCW. weird Canadian yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the arena goes dark again, and this time a floating image of two moons appears over the ramp. And, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Woof. And then uh, in front of, in front of that, that projection, you see the silhouette of a man who changes shape in the moonlight, transforming basically into a werewolf uh, before dashing out of the, the uh, projection. And a fighter appears at the top of the ramp, uh, and uh, uh, their name appears in the image, and their name is Moonbeam. And Moonbeam is another sort of massive hulking figure wearing a black spandex onesie with silver trim and uh, has a, actually a luchador mask on. Um, and uh, from the edges of, of, of both the mask and the onesie, you can see these big, thick tufts of brown fur that are poking out. Uh, and there's a big silver crescent moon on their uh, onesie. And uh, I think once they make it in the ring, they point at you, Magnus, and they point their open mouth and then rub their tummy. And then... <laughs> And then Death Man like walks up and like kind of tugs on their shoulders like, no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> can't just tip I point back at both of them, point in my mouth, and rub my tummy with both hands. Uh, and then uh, he just kind of sulkingly like walks to the corner. Um, and then the lights go out one more time. A spotlight shines down on the top of the ramp, and two large prop angel wings spread out from the sides of the entrance curtain. And aside, swings down from the ceiling, announcing the entrance of a fighter named Jeff Angel. And before I describe Jeff Angel's entrance, I would very much like to play his entrance music, which is the only piece of original music that I've prepared for the evening. If you can play Jeff, if you can play Jeff Angel's theme from there, it is, and really, really crank it up. Shh, I don't listen. Oh, 
shirt answers Jeff Angel. Half bird, half man. <laughs> With long, bright white feathers and two long, beautiful wings. You can turn down Jeff Angel's theme song. Without even thinking, Magnus bursts into applause. <laughs> the audience reaction to Jeff Angel is mixed at best. Uh... And uh, he jumps into the ring and he flies up a little bit. He's Aarakocra, by the way, which is a fun new D&D race. Um, and he grabs the microphone that's like starting to be raised up. He like grabs it and pulls it back down. And uh, he says, uh, my name is Jeff Angel. <laughs> that's great. He says, uh, and I value three things above all. Integrity, hard work, being nice to kids. <laughs> Now, uh, now uh, I don't know much about Jess's new partner and manager here, but I do know one thing. These seem like the type of guys that forget to call their dads on their birthdays. <laughs> August 10th? I would never forget. He says, well, Jeff Angel calls his dad every day. <laughs> From the rafters, you hear, you tell him, Jeff. <laughs> Gary's a Jeff head. And then, uh... Greg, sorry. (laughs) And then, uh, that's the end of his speech. (laughs) (laughs) I call my dad every day. Greg. Um, (laughs) Back to Taco real quick. Um, uh, A door at one of the ends of the catwalk opens up, and two security guards come barging in. Mm -hmm. Uh, And uh, just as they point in your direction... And yell something, the starting bell below rings. Let's roll some initiative. Hey everybody, it's Griffin McElroy, your dungeon master, your best friend, and your ring master... Which is, the, the, of course, a position that is in every wrestling match, of course. I told you I'd think of something. Thanks for listening to episode, well, I'm probably not going to give it a number, but the Boston Live Stunt Spectacular. Uh, thank you all for sticking with us during this, uh, this uh, what's the right word to use here? Uh, a, a blissfully happy, but also slightly stressful time in our lives. Uh, like I said, uh, the uh, we, we have two more sort of special episodes planned uh, that we are probably going to hold on to until December. Uh, so the next episode that goes up uh, should be the next episode in the Suffering Game arc. Um, but if not, we will make sure to communicate that on our Twitter account, which is the Zonecast. But for now, uh, I want to tell you about some some kind folks and companies who have sponsored the show this week, starting with Movement Watches. That's M-V-M-T, but it's you just say Movement Watches. Uh, and this is a company that was founded on the belief that style shouldn't break the bank. Uh, we got sent Movement Watches, and I'm not a big watch guy. Um, I tend to just wear the most sort of utilitarian timepiece that I can get my hands on. But this is a stylish-ass watch, and I've actually had people say, like, hey... Nice watch, which never happened to me when I was using, you know, my crummy old fucking Tiger Electronics Batman watch, which, yes, you could play a Batman game on, but it wasn't sleek and stylish like this. Uh, And also, when I look at it, I know what fucking time it is, and that's great, too. Movement watches start at just 95 bucks. Uh, which, you know, if you have bought a watch at like a department store anytime recently, that is a really nice price. Uh, They're a classic design, quality construction, and styled minimalism. Uh, And they have sold over uh, half a million watches in over 160 countries. And you can join the movement craze today. You can get 15% off a movement watch with free shipping and free returns if you go to movementwatches.com slash adventure. Again, that is M V M t watches.com slash adventure uh and and get a great deal on a really slick watch also want to tell you about nature box who is another sponsor this week uh nature box uh makes snacks that actually taste great and are better for you created with high quality ingredients that are free from artificial colors flavors or sweeteners so you can feel great about snacking uh and and you don't have to worry about i know you got probably a bunch of halloween candy left over throw that in the fucking dumpster where it belongs and get these sweet sweet snacks from nature box they got stuff like dark cocoa nom noms they got stuff like mini belgian waffles they have peanut butter graham jam 
What is that? You can, you can find out if you go to Nature Box. Uh, they got cinnamon yogurt mini grams. Hello. Grams of all varieties. And like a shitload of nom noms. They got honey Dijon pretzels. They got all kinds of stuff. You're going to love it. Right now, NatureBox is offering Adventure Zone fans 50% off your first order when you go to naturebox.com slash adventure. That is naturebox.com slash adventure, and you can get 50% off your first order. One more time, naturebox.com slash adventure. Got a couple uh, Jumbotron messages for you this week. If you want to get a Jumbotron message on this show, it has been impossible for a while because we got all full up. Um, but on November 28th, on Cyber Monday, we are going to open up some some Jumbotron spots for 2017. So if you do want to get a message on this show, Cyber Monday, November 28th is going to be the day to do that. Just go to MaximumFun.org slash Jumbotron, and uh, you'll be able to get those spots then. This first uh, message is from Tabletop Champions, a podcast that you can find on iTunes or your favorite podcast app, uh, or you can follow them on Twitter at Tabletop Champs. Uh, They say, do you like what you're listening to now? How about a podcast that is slightly less funny that contains slightly more dungeons and or dragons? Check out season two premiere episode number 50 for a great jumping on point. I will say tabletop champions. That's a fair criticism. We have not had we have not had a surplus of dragons or dungeons, really, if you think about it. Okay, well, they got us dead to rights on that. Uh, Go check out tabletop champions on iTunes. Uh, I you're you're if you like this show. I mean, it's I mean, it's the same kind of thing. So you'll you'll probably like that too. Also, have a message here for Keen, and it's from Jer and Richie, who say, "Keen, not only are you our good good birthday boy, you're also our good good friendship boy. Maybe someday, when we're all back living on the same landmass, we can start our own D and D podcast and finally take down the strong stranglehold monopoly that Taz has uh, had these past few years. We miss, love, and are proud of you." in equal measures. It's been an ongoing theme in these Jumbotron messages lately of people just like watching the fucking throne. And like, again, like, yes, step, please, please step. If you're feeling froggy, then jump. I hate to come at you hostile like this, but I feel like you established this energy. I'm just following up on it. I want to thank everybody who's been tweeting about the show using the the Zonecast hashtag. Uh, I've got some names picked out for the the Suffering Game arc, although I realize now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think I announced any of those names in the last episode. Uh, but we're gonna get there, I promise. If you tweet about the show using the the Zonecast hashtag, you might end up as an NPC on the show. Uh, and now is the time to do that. Not only can you get on the show, we just like we super appreciate you spreading the word. We don't pay to advertise the Adventure Zone at all. Uh, we're all really, really passionate about it. We work really hard on it, um, and so word of mouth is the only way that we find new listeners and can grow and do more stuff with it. Like this Boston live show, uh, which like I, it only was the special night that it was because of the community that you all helped us build. Um, so thank you all so so much. Uh, I'm going to let you get back to the episode. The next episode should be up on November 17th, and that should be the next episode in the the Suffering Game arc. We're we're hoping to have time to sit down and record it. Um, And if anything changes, we will let you know on the the Zonecast Twitter account. Uh, So so stay tuned there. Follow us there for for updates on our programming schedule. Uh, But yeah, we have two more filler episodes I say filler. That's sort of a rude term. I'm, I'm very, very excited for you to hear these other two episodes as well. Um, but we're hoping to save those for December when I uh, am out with my uh, with my newborn baby. Um, but we, we're, we're kind of flying by the seat of our pants right now, and we hope that you stick with us. I guarantee you uh, we're, we're, we're going to work really hard on whatever comes out, and, and you're going to like it. You, you, you just got to trust us. So, yeah, next episode, November 17th, and uh, we'll talk to you then. Bye. I got a 13. I got a 14, but I roll again because of some thingamajig that I it's have. It's been so long. <laughs> What'd you get? 18. Nice. Plus what? Plus. Yep. Plus. Yep. Somebody out there knows. Jesus. No, that's not what we're doing. What'd you get, Taco? What? what am I doing? Where? What am I looking at? Oh, no, the app is broken. Ah, oh, it's not so easy, is it, smartass? There you go. See? There's a box in- called Zero initiative. initiative, so I was right. 18! Okay, Regis Philbin. <laughs> uh, Taco, what you got? Do you feel like I should have advantage of that? Because I had the arcane eye that probably saw the door opening. Yeah, I like that. Okay, good. <laughs> Look, it, uh, 
<laughs> we I know had, you I were really going to try tonight. I had a bad one, um, but six. <laughs> it's initiative. That's good. That's what you want. You want low. You want to go last. You want low because it starts one and goes. Uh, <laughs> shit. I actually don't know if that was a joke or not. And that makes just, you adorable. I just wait for people to say, go, Taco. I'm like, okay, I'll go. All right. Uh, first in the order is Merle, uh, off to the uh, corner of the ring. So, again, just to sort of lay out the uh, objectives here, uh, Magnus, you're trying to beat the four uh, fighters. Uh, uh, Jess says she can handle Sabine, so really, you really got Jeff Angel, Deathman, and Moonbeam. Uh, Merle, you're off to the side. You've got to uh, you've, you've got to keep everybody sort of healthy and vital. But if you want to get in there and mix it up, that would be fun and inexplicable. But go for it. Um, and Taco, you are uh, beset upon by uh, two security guards, but you're also trying to keep them safe from an assassin. How far away are the security guards? Uh, I mean, it's not going to be your turn for such a long time. Perfect. That, I feel like That's I have a while perfect. to figure that out. That's perfect. Uh, but they're about 30 feet away from you. Okay. Uh, let's say 29 feet in case you got a good 30 foot spell. Uh, Merle, what are you doing? I'm going to do something really out of character. Okay. I'm going to cast like a cleric thing. <laughs> yeah. I thought about casting Zone of Truth, but I'm going to save that. <laughs> I never call my for dad. A, for an even more inappropriate moment, I cast Aid which is a spell that bolsters my allies with toughness and resolve. I bet you're regretting wearing those prop glasses. And... I can't see shit. <laughs> Travis, just read his cards for him. I yeah. had to dress him backstage. <laughs> uh, I did the yes, resolve yeah, part. Uh, each target's hit point maximum and current hit points increased by five for the duration. Some nice shit there, right? So now Madness has five extra hit points? Yeah, and it, it permanently inc- or it increases for the duration of the thing, so okay. we can heal back up to that level. So sure. I'm going to cast that okay. on Magnus. Magnus. <laughs> Played by Travis McElroy. Right. Uh, well, you remember that one, huh? Next. I have to. Legally. You're a dependent. You cast a spell. <laughs> you ca- Wait, I am not. I'm 32 goddamn you years are- old. Yeah, but I'm still claiming you. Let's never release this episode. Yeah. <laughs> I think you cast that spell on Magnus, and then from the crowd you hear like, yeah, great buff. <laughs> Is that what it's called? <laughs> it's all about the fun. You hear, a, you hear one cleric in the audience just go like, yeah, man, it's all about the fundamentals. <laughs> and it was on that night, July 15, 2016, uh, I cast a buff. Magnus. You are uh, uh, actually next in the order is Jess uh, and Sabine, who I think just do that wrestler thing where they just like run up to each other and just start like hitting each other very fast, uh, and they are they're sort of tied up. Uh, Magnus, it is your turn next in the order. Uh, I'm going to. Uh, how are they all standing? Where is uh, everybody? Each one is in like a corner right now, uh, or they've moved in a little bit from the corner, but they're. they're do we have? This is an important question. Yeah. Turnstile ropes, the Turnstile whole deal. Turnstile ropes, three three ropes, the whole thing. Great. I'm going to make like I'm running at Moonbeam. Okay. Like, you know, maybe a stiff arm. Sure. But at the last minute, I'm going to pull a stiff arm, bounce off the rope, come in his back. Okay. I want you, no joke, I want you to describe every maneuver that you do with that level of, of detail. You got it. Um, go ahead and roll your attack roll, and then depending well, on... that's my keychain. <laughs> Don't roll your keychain. Oh, that's a three. <laughs> Where? Where? Oh! Plus eight, eleven. God, that's so many, but still no. You, you so you, you do like a, a you, you bounce off the ropes and you come at him with your stiff arm and then you hit him and you just kind of like push forward like. <laughs> uh, can he make that noise? Uh, and I think I think Moonbeam just kind of pushes you away. Uh, I get multiple attacks per okay. round. Go ahead. And now I'm going to try to I don't know. Um, a scissor kick? Is that a thing? <laughs> I'm just going to jump on Moonbeam's back and cover his eyes. <laughs> Make him guess who it is. Yeah. But like in a really angry way. I'm a bad guy. Rawr. Uh, okay. 
Uh, what do you think that would be? Like, uh, I, don't, I think I'd just do it. <laughs> no, I think that would be... Acrobatics? Uh, no, 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 I think it would be a strength check, probably. Oh, no, there's one of my D20s gone. Okay. Strength check? I'm good at those. Yeah, because he's going to try and wrestle you off. That's a 17 plus 8, 25. Uh, I got an 18, so that's good enough. Uh, okay, you're now covering his eyes <laughs> and kind of... And, oh, and also I'm saying really mean things in his ear. Like what? Like, you're a, you're a poop, and nobody likes you. I'm a jerk. Rawr. Okay. Uh, I think next up is... Not I think. I have a list of people. It's Deathman <laughs> is up next. Deathman is just going to run, and uh, uh, he was going to attack you, Magnus, but I think he's just going to kind of spear tackle the two of you. Um, two of who? Uh, Moonbeam and Magnus. Okay. Uh, Can I use my cunning action now? Uh no, that's how many turn, turns bud. do you get? I get a lot, man. How many spells do you get? Uh, One a time. All right. Asked and answered. He tackles the two of you, which uh, does damage to both of you, but unfortunately, it knocks you uh, off his back, and both of you are now prone on the Poop. ground. Um, and uh, take. Oh my God! Uh, take. 11 points of damage. Uh, I'm going to uh, do parry. Okay, what's that do? Uh, when hit, use the, uh, the, the dice to reduce damage by D8. Okay, just do it. Okay. D&D invented by Gary Gagnon. Uh, this one? Welcome to the exposition zone. That's a four plus uh, my dexterity, which is two, so it's uh, minus by uh, six. Okay. You know what I didn't bring? What? Anything to write anything down with. Oh, no. Do we have a pen? Can somebody in the throw just throw a? But don't throw it. That would no, be please bad, don't but. throw. Because obviously we are not very dexterous. Oh, Jeez. All right, please okay. stop. Okay, we are good now. Thank you, Kelsey. Everybody, thank you, Kelsey. Got a pen. Thank you, Kelsey. All right. Uh, thank you. Next, some in, pruning shears. Next in the order. Next in the order is Jeff Angel, uh, and Jeff Angel waves his hand in front of his face and then disappears. Would you guys buy action figures of these wrestlers? I feel like I, that would be... We would get busted for intellectual property fa- theft so fast. Really? Is that somebody? Have you heard of the, the wrestler named Jonathan Cena? <laughs> I like um, him. He he was very he, he was a great singer, wasn't he? Okay. Yeah. Um, what? John Moon, Cena. Okay. So Moonbeam is next, and Moonbeam uh, stands up from being prone. It's a move action, and Moonbeam is going to uh, get on top of you, Magnus, for a pin. No, he's not. Wait. What is he? <laughs> he is going to get on top of you. Check for your a notes. Uh, make a strength check with me. Can I first like say something to him? Yeah. Sure. Let's fuck up this old man first. <laughs> Like, if you beat me, you're just going to have to face him. So why don't we tag no, team him? the only objective is to take out you and Jess. Oh, really? Yeah, it's them four against you. Uh, what you got? What I are we doing? Can Strength? Take, like, quick time out. I feel like in fiction, he would have said that. And I feel like you would need to respond. Because that, like, it seems okay, like okay. in fiction he would have thought he that. He says, um, character voices. I did mine. He oh. says, uh, uh, no. The character voice police. <laughs> We finally got them all in one room, boys. <laughs> all, everybody except the poorly one. He says... Uh, he crushes I, it every episode. He's trying. <laughs> he says, I feel like I should listen to you, but yeah. I think I'm just going to pin you instead. It's fair. Are you going to roll that dice? Um... It's 8 plus 8, 16. Now, okay, he's on top of you now. So if it gets back to Moonbeam's turn, you have lost the wrestling match. Uh, I, I'm not going to. Um, I think the person that that definitely needs to be directed to is my buff friend. Uh, well, oh, first, really, arm chopper? First up is the... Oh, boy. A lot of stuff uh, surfacing tonight. Uh, next up, actually, is the security guards uh, who run over to you, Taco. Uh, recognize you as not one of their own. Yeah. Um, and I don't know how they do it. Maybe they have a special pair of glasses on that lets them see. It seems like you kind of cheated around okay, my yeah, good no, okay, idea. All right, all right. They run over to you and they say, uh, uh, <laughs> I fucking forgot his name already. Catwalk Gerald. Ger- 
Jerry? Catwalk Boy, I think it was. Catwalk Boy Gerald fell down, and he, he came to us and said that a guy matching your description knocked him off. You wouldn't happen to know anything about this, would you? Yeah, you guys got me fair and square. Let's get out of here. <laughs> okay. They're going, they're going to put a plastic zip tie around your wrist and arrest you. Are you cool with that? Sounds great. Okay, they just do it. Okay, good. Um, it's your, it is actually your next in the order. It's yeah, your turn. Yeah, no. Uh, I cast mislead. Okay. I turn invisible at the same time as an illusory double of me appears where I'm standing. <laughs> I'll let the, I, will let, I will break the laws of D&D to let these two things happen at the exact same time. What, what do you mean? Oh, it wasn't your turn, but it can definitely you be You said your it was turn. my turn. It's your turn now, yeah. Oh, but they well, arrested they arrested their me. Turn. That's yeah, their yeah. turn. I didn't want to raise suspicions. Okay. So, mislead. And then I, uh, I uh, get the umber staff. Okay. Up. Open. It has feather fall in it. I jump off the catwalk. <laughs> on to... On to the guy that currently has uh, Magnus pinned. Yeah. Are you are but you here, Okay, here's the other thing. The other the other The other small note of this is that um I can make it gesture speak and behave in whatever way I choose. So so now you are playing fake Taco who has been arrested and invisible Taco in the ring? Right. How long it's are you invisible? Uh, up to an hour. This spell is OP. Okay. It's a good spell. But I can't direct... Okay, I can also see through his eyes and use his senses. Yeah. Um, but I become uh, uh, blind and deaf in my meat form when I'm in spirit. So you just launched your bar- body into, like, darkness without seeing, like, where you were going if your invisible form is the one that can't see or hear? But, I'm, no, it, I choose it will. Okay. Um, and right now, I want to see the guy who's jumping on the guy. Okay, yeah, you see the guy who's jumping on the guy. Yeah, you land on Moonbeam and knock him, knock him off, saving Magnus from the pin. He just perfect. And, the- <laughs> and then I get the hell out of the ring. Okay, yeah, you probably had a little bit of move action. Arcane You're- Eye is still active. I still have an overhead view of the ring. And now I'm, pro- I'm just... Cru- Jesus, okay, so you've got like a fucking full-blown like picture in picture. <laughs> I've got a fucking Snake Eyes style security <laughs> network. Like fucking eyeing all of- I've got my eyes in the Gary. I've got... Or Jeff... What's his name? Greg. i got my eyes in the Greg. Greg eyes up. i got arcane eye. All right. And then I'm, cru- I'm just patrolling around, walking around. Here's, here's, you're here's like Jesus or something. With your, with your uh, floating eye then, I will say this. After you jump down, you see uh, a shape up on the catwalk that was standing basically right next to you before you jumped down that was uh, wearing a chameleon cloak that was sort of uh, hiding them. Uh, they don't see your, your floating eyeball, so they kind of poke their head out, and you see a figure up on the catwalk that you just jumped down from. Great. Probably okay. fine. Uh, but my turn's got to be over as hell by Your now, turn right? is super duper okay. over. Yeah. Uh, I also want to make clear, you two do not know about this figure at all. That's fine. Cool. Uh, Merle, you're next. I don't even know what the hell we're talking Great. about Great, Merle, it's your turn. <laughs> uh, Merle, uh, actually, before you go, uh, Jess, who is, like, still, like, just, just her and Sabine are just, like, just having a punch. Uh, Jess, <laughs> mid-punch, just, like, turns to you and says, and points down at the ring, and, like, points, like, she's pointing under it, like, under the ring, under the ring. She's mouthing, under the ring. Under and she's the- pointing at her ass like that? No. Does she need one of those hemorrhoid cushions? And it's your turn. <laughs> uh, you you gonna... said no hemorrhoid jokes. Yeah. I forgot. I'm sorry. In pre-show prep, I forgot that. What's your? What are you going to do on your turn in the game Dungeons & Dragons? I'm going to go look under the ring. Yay! Yeah. Roll, roll a d20 for me. Okay. Yep. He got it. Oh, sick fucking burn from the Come crowd. On, let's go. Come on. Sit down, Dad. It's not worth it. My arm fell off. He actually has My a arm caddy. Fell off. And this caddy has each one labeled. 
Bucks. <laughs> we'll be selling these in the lobby after the show. We won't. We won't. You liar. Guys, it's, it's pre-marketing. It's you not. It's no, lies. It's marketing for non-existent products. Please roll the dice. Clinton. He rolled it. He got a 15. 15. 15. What am I adding to okay, it? Okay, for a fifth, nothing. It's just a roll to see what you pull out from underneath. This is kind of like a fantasy kashapon of its own. <laughs> I have a table. And I get to keep it, right? It is a, a, a big metal ladder is what you pull out from under. <laughs> I'm also going to say that doesn't count as your action. Now you have a big metal ladder. and uh, what, what kind of magic does it have? The, it can get you up higher levitation, but like a super efficient form of levitation. Uh, all right. How, how high is it? How tall? Eight feet. Have you watched wrestling ever? <laughs> I watch Olympic wrestling. I watch Greco-Roman wrestling. I will say... Wait, hold on. Do you? <laughs> no! Okay. okay. I will say, I will Super say this. Super quick. Raise your hand if you ever wrestled for a sport. Okay, there we go. That's Travis. I was a... Oh, you were, weren't you? Yes, I was. I went to every wrestling match he and did. watched me lose every time. He match. lost every match. The one time no, I didn't go. No, we don't go. have to tell this story. The one time I didn't go. I beat a kid with the he, flu. He beat a kid with the flu. It's the one time I ever won at wrestling. The, the, uh, <laughs> the things you pull out from under the ring can be used for whatever you want. They can also be used as improvised weapons. That's what this stuff under the ring exists for. You're really leading me down the path here, aren't you? No, I'm saying do whatever you want. I'm just saying now you have an improvised weapon or you can use it to get up high and change a light bulb. (laughs) All right. I take the magic ladder with all the powers it has and um, I hit somebody with it. Which one? (laughs) Jeff Angel, Moonbeam, or Death Man? The... Moon Jeff. Being death blow. He moons oh, Jeff. Oh, you know what? Moon Jeff is an acceptable answer because of your ingenuity. It's long enough. You could probably hit two of these boys with it. I know, Griffin. I hit Moon and Jeff. Okay, roll your D20. When is my regular... Plus seven. It's a plus seven. Plus 20! I hit him with a 20. Okay, yeah, that'll hit both of them. Uh, roll, uh, roll 1d12, the 12 oh, sided sh- one. Nike. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> he can do it. I feel like I ought to be taking him out of a little silk purse and okay. a fly comes out of Move it. Move it along. Right, here comes the 12. The 12. It's a 12! Nice, okay. <laughs> Damn, I'm good at this game. So, actually, what you did, to make it clear, you threw it at Moonbeam, and uh, it also hit the invisible Jeff Angel, knocking him out of invisibility. Uh, Did I kill him? No, but Moonbeam looks bad off. Uh, Next in the order is uh, Jess and Sabine, uh, and I think Jess actually manages to get one over on Sabine and has her pinned. Uh, Next in the order is Magnus. I'm going to pick up that ladder. Nice. Thank you. Uh, and I'm just going to two-handed swing at it, old Moonbeam. Okay. Thank you. The old ladder bash. Uh, oh, that's not going to do it. Boy, this being uh, honest stuff is not working well, for I'm you. Well, I'm not using my good dice. Where's my good die? There we go. Yeah, roll it. So that was one. a four. You roll the that dice doesn't that do doesn't it. have a four on but it. But now I'm going to backhand swing for my second attack. Okay. <laughs> Uh, that's oh. not any better. That's a six. So many whiffs. No, 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 and no. Perfect. Uh, um, I'm now going to use a uh, cunning action. Uh, thank you. Um, to get uh, away. Okay. Where are you going? Um, I'm actually going to get on uh, the other side of Jess so that she's flanking Sabine. Okay. That's fine. Uh, I've still see? got the ladder in my hands. That's fine. And I hold it in front of me like a shield. Um, Magnus, make a dexterity saving throw for me. That's a 13 plus 2, 15. Uh, okay, you, uh, as you are making that action, um, a dart uh, flies by your neck, just missing you by a, an inch, uh, and sticks into the ring. Uh, and you see it stick into the ring, and then it 
vanishes in a puff of black smoke. Was it Jeff Angel? No, you, it didn't come from anybody in the crowd uh, or, or, or uh, in the ring. Uh, can I do a quick uh, perception check to see if I can tell where it came from? Yeah, sure. Well, that's a 13. Yep. Uh, it, came from, it came from above. <laughs> Uh, next in the order is... I look at Merle and I just point to the catwalk. Next in the order is Death, yep. Death Man, who's actually going to run over and try to stop uh, Jess from pinning Sabine. And that's a two. So he's just like, cut it out! <laughs> <laughs> you bad lady! And then Jeff, uh, I think, is going to spread his beautiful white wings and fly up in the air and then come diving down with a kick on you, Magnus. Okay. Uh, and he rolls a 22 versus AC. That's probably good. That is going to hit. And now, he does have the ladder held up in front of him as a shield. Uh, that's yeah, only nine points of damage. Still going to hit. What? Nine damage. Please don't do anything else to pay. Yeah, it's fine. Moonbeam is up next. And what Moonbeam does is really interesting. He cries. Uh, <laughs> because he looks like he's about to run at you, Magnus, and then he stops. And he sniffs, and he goes... <laughs> He looks around the ring, and then he looks directly at you, Taco. Holy shit! And he runs over to you, Taco, and grabs you. Uh, and as soon as he does, your invisibility wears off. And he picks you up, and he lifts up a claw to come swinging down at you, and he goes, Taco, what the blazes are you doing here? It's Claw! <laughs> And he takes it's Kelsey Grammer, ladies and gentlemen. He takes off his luchador mask, and it is Clark the Bugbear. Yeah! And he says, as I live and breathe, Taco, my dearest friend, what are you doing here? Well, it's a beautiful I, reunion. I was invisible. And now I'm not. So thank you for that. That's good. That get- I'm sorry. I thought I smelled your beautiful musk. <laughs> oh, and, and indeed you did. Very perceptive. Uh, I and- just want to say, I want to clear the air. The last time we saw each other, you made me jump off of a motorcycle onto a tank into a laser beam. And I just want to say, I understand why you had to do that. Sure. And I'm not angry. Uh... It's good to see you. It's very good to see you. I, I, um... I have a new tea backstage I'm very excited about. I think you're going to love it. First off, let's say the obvious. I'm sorry. Do you mean, mean to try to kill you? That was really sweet. I have something I also want to... And then he... You hear like a... Tzz, and he goes rigid. Son of a bitch. And then he fucking suplexes you. No! I actually think he grabs you and jumps off the top rope with crazy bugbear acrobatics and like jumps like 10 feet in the air and suplexes you. Uh, and that's a 24. Let me see. Let me check my AC. <laughs> I'm, oh. I'm going to enforce disadvantage because I said I was wielding as a shield and I'm going to use my protector thing to make him have to roll I don't again. Think you were, I don't think you were within five feet of him. You ran mean, how big is the fucking hexagon? It's big. It's a, you know, it's big. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, I'll roll it again. <laughs> How about a 21? Does that still get there? That's a hit, yes. Uh, she does this insane, like, diving suplex. Uh, and you get hit for 28 points of damage. <laughs> That's bad, right? Not great. Uh, and you are prone. And he says, you made me jump off of a motorcycle onto a tank and get shot by a laser. True. <laughs> Guilty. So it's- listen, 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 listen. Tuck over on that one. That, that, that's a, I'll grant you that suplex for free. Don't do it again. I will literally die. <laughs> uh, I think the, the security guards are next. Do we play out what <laughs> Taco does? <laughs> Um, well, okay, here's the only problem. 
I need no. We can't because I need a I bonus. I think this, actually the spell's broken probably when he shook you out of the invisibility. It got me out of the invisibility. It didn't break the the other guy. But I I need to use a bonus action oh, to be able yeah, to switch yeah. my awareness okay. so I wouldn't see what. Uh, well, then they're just like. But he is the thing about him. The the programming I left him with. He is chattering incessantly and saying the most <laughs> banal like state of the world things. He, so literally every word out of his mouth. Constantly, because I didn't teach him how to listen, it's just like so crazy weather we're having, huh? That's how Greg sees it anyway. You guys go to the Padres and game. Like, Stop, later? Wait, hold on. We have to ask you questions. No, about no, how you no. Broke I, I, you know, listen, I love being here with you guys. This is great. You got any soda? <laughs> Every time Greg says soda, that's how he says. Uh, it. Taco, you're actually up next. Whoa. Hello, everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> oh my God, they're out there. Okay. Uh, Taco, you're up next. Uh, I, uh, you got, uh, 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 Sabine's about to pin somebody, uh, you No, gotta, I thought Jess had Sabine. Yeah, Jess has Sabine, sorry. Jess has, is about to pin Sabine. Uh, you got three other fighters, and you have a dart that just came at Magnus from the catwalk. Okay, I, cl- I cast Cloud Kill. That's what a cool name, fuck? right? Yeah, so check this heat. You, I created a 20-foot radius sphere of poison. This is at the center of the catwalk. You create a 20-foot radius sphere of poisonous yellow-green fog centered on a point you choose within range. The fog spreads around corners. It lasts for the duration or until strong wind disperses the fog. Good luck indoors, ending the spell. Its area is heavily obscured. So, cheese it with the knives. When a creature enters the spell's area for the first time on or on a turn, it starts its turn there. That creature must make a constitution saving throw and uh, well, we should start with that. Okay. Still, again, let me remind oh you, there's a bunch of people underneath this. Yeah, but it's a 20-foot spear. It's a 20, folks. No, that's a one. That's a one, actually, on that one. <laughs> so that's a critical failure. Yeah, yeah, no. This, they yeah, are I very failed poisoned. as hell. So now it's going to take 5d8 poison damage. Holy shit. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, okay, good. They're affected even if they hold their breath. So let's let's uh, see what we got here. Uh, four, six, ten, seven, seventeen, five, twenty-two. Wow, show-offs. Twenty-four. Twenty. Is that all? Is that five? <laughs> yes. Was that five? Yes. Okay. What was the total? What? One more. Apparently, everybody's saying one more. One more. I said seven. Okay. Thirty-one. I point at the sky and say, "I got that fart touch," and then <laughs> emit a cloud kill. All right. Into the air. I think in the interest of moving things along, the, this shadowy figure goes next, and you hear a, uh, you hear, ah, as they get this bad, bad poison damage. <laughs> and then uh, they cast Gust of Wind to push the poison cloud directly downward into the ring. Hell yeah! I need everybody to make a constitution saving throw. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I rolled a 13. Oh, I got a 13. Oh, oh my God. no. Oh, my God. I rolled a six. Holy shit, this is going to hit everybody. <laughs> Holy shit, it hit everybody. <laughs> How'd you do, Taco? Uh, 13. It hit fucking everybody. <laughs> Smooth move, X Lax. I tried my best. One. How many is it? Five. Five yeah. D eight. One. That's seven. Holy. Sh- you can't. I'm trying to add things. What? Oh yeah, dwarves are have something. Thank you. That one time tonight, but not again. You have advantage against poisoning. Roll again. Yeah. Oh yeah, I do. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Nineteen. Yeah, okay, Merle. But just that one time. But never do that again. Okay. Okay. So it's 20 points of damage. That's nothing to me. (laughs) I take 20 points of damage when I eat my breakfast. Wait a minute. Do I take 20 points of damage? No. Oh, guys, you don't want me to be the last one standing. No, you're fine. We actually do. You're the cleric. (laughs) What does that mean? How's Taco? How's Taco? He's is right. that like an accountant? Are we about to have a taco death like t- 
time paradox situation on our hands? No, I'm good. Okay. Uh, I think with that, because we have been going for like an hour and a half now, uh, that takes out a few folks. Uh, uh... Uh, I think uh, I think Sabine gets pinned. Uh, I, I, I think uh, Jess takes quite a bit of damage, but she is still up. Uh, Deathman goes down. Uh, actually, no, uh, Deathman's fine. Jeff goes down, and uh, yeah. Fuck like, Jeff! Ah. <laughs> you wouldn't buy his action figure, and now you all love him. So uh, uh, this happens, and, and you feel a, uh, a quake happen throughout the crowd as, th- as this happens. And everybody's just, like, running off because now they're terrified of this poison cloud that has descended upon the ring and nearly killed everybody. Uh, and that figure falls off the catwalk into the ring, and you see a, a woman with short red hair wearing that chameleon robe. Uh, and she has, like, a bandolier with those darts on, and she's got a, a, a staff, and she falls down. And uh, uh, helps herself up and says, uh, uh, I don't know which one of you is working with Garagos, but I don't have time to to wait anymore and and figure it out. It's him. She looks at you, Taco, and says, you powerful wizard, (laughs) master wizard. Are you an acolyte? (laughs) What? Are you an acolyte of Garagos? Yes. Say yes. Yes? Yes. No. No, no, no. I'm Don't a, ever listen to dad. I'm but a, uh, uh, I'm but a humble cooking wizard <laughs> whose ratings are bound to improve when people start dying on this show. The void fish is going to have its work cut out for it, making everybody she forget says, this right. shit. She says, uh, my name is Marie. I'm a magus of the order of Tempest, the war god. But see, like my war god, let me explain some stuff. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Tempest is a war god of honorable battle, and Garagos is an old, long-forgotten god who is the patron of, of raiders and wanton violence. Oh, and that would I re- be us. I yeah. received a missive that an ancient cell of the cult of Garagos survived and was operating out of Neverwinter, and I tracked them to this place, to the Chaos Theater. And she takes a dart and throws it at one of those banners that have been hanging from the walls, and you actually see... I think, Merle, you'd recognize it. Actually, make a religion roll for me. Merle, maybe yours is more of an earthy religion. I don't sure. know if you, how well read you are. The twenty sided twelve plus religion four. Okay, yeah, that's sixteen. Enough. You see the sigil that is hidden underneath this banner. It is five arms that are sort of folded in a circle, and they're all holding scimitars. Uh, and that is the the sigil of Garagos. And you realize that this. Carrie, are you writing this down? <laughs> For the fan art later? Write this down, you Carrie, because that'll be people. awesome. Uh, this, is, this place, this old building, is actually an old temple of Garagos that has been... Uh, Who uh, planned this shit? Uh, uh, you, oh, it's human men. Uh, and there is... Uh, after this, this one act of, let's call it what it is, wanton violence as this poison cloud descends upon <laughs> the, uh, uh, the ring, uh, uh, Marie explains that uh, th- this match, this su- the Supreme Champion Finals, this represents uh, a-, a ritual of revival uh, that is supposed to bring back the Avatar of Garagos from the Realm of Banishment, where, where a-, a wanton marauder would slay the four champions of the land. Sound familiar? Yeah, I think uh, we're in some real bad stuff. I don't know why my voice got so much deeper all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. I'm Jess now. <laughs> She says, I took out Brock Thickstone because he was involved, and I, I was trying to figure out who was here, and uh, it got really confusing. Who else, who else was a co-conspirator? But uh, fast-forwarding through a lot of plot because this fight took much longer than Griffin thought it would. <laughs> um, but, oh, no, uh, he's had a stroke. <laughs> uh... Let's fast-forward to the end of the fight. Uh, so there is a... We win! The end. No, no, you have not won. There's a trimmer. Uh, uh, after this cloud came down. And it's been kind of steady as she explained her situation. Uh, and the, the ritual of resurrection uh, just happens. It's not a lengthy process. All of a sudden, you don't even see them appear. It's like they've been there though for, for an eternity, but in a different plane. Uh, there are five humongous blood-red arms with these massive hands, uh, these massive clawed hands, all reaching upward and kind of slamming the ground. They're all popping out from, from different points of the ring on the outsides of the ring. Uh, and they're trying to pull a body out of the depths. Uh, and the crowd has scattered. Uh, one of the pillars actually falls inward to the crowd, uh, which is mostly evacuated at this point, but it lands. Uh, and when it lands, you actually see like 
a few chairs away from it, you see Angus, uh, who's like holding a big pretzel. Oh, please. I oh, don't. please. I want you to know, Magnus does not even hesitate and takes off to grab Angus. No. No, no. that's good. Uh, and uh, uh, so this pillar falls, and he's just like holding a big pretzel. I spring off of the ropes to grab him. Uh, okay. And he's wearing a Jeff Angel t-shirt. <laughs> I still grab him, but I rip the t-shirt as I do. <laughs> and I whisper in his ear, fuck your t-shirt. <laughs> so you've just torn the clothes off this small boy. A great look at any time. And the crowd has scattered, uh, except for uh, uh, one figure who is sitting in a big comfy looking chair behind the announcer's table. You see Merrick, the CEO of Battlefest, who draws a small dagger from a hidden sheath and he drags it across his stomach. Uh, But he's not cutting his belly open, he's just cutting open his robe, and a giant dark orb emerges from it. (laughs) And the orb is glowing a bright red with a swirling crimson cloud suspended within, and he's laughing with malice, but also with kind of like relief because his plan just came together. Um, You know. and uh, like you do. We've all been there. Yeah. When your plan comes together and you just think, ha, 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 ha. Jess, uh, <laughs> Jess, who is still standing, grabs uh, Sabine and uh, grabs Jeff, uh, Angel, and, like, drags them up the ramp and is like, you guys got this. Uh, and uh, Deathman just, like, runs away. Nice. <laughs> uh, so it's just you uh, in the ring. Uh, this will complicate things with a still very angry Clark. Uh, and Merrick off to the side holding this orb. Magnus, actually, you're in the stands with uh, 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 Angus just sort of running around. Uh, and we'll get back into it. I guess we'll start with top of order. Um, m- well, I did something while that was, like, I want to do take an action while that was happening. I didn't want to interrupt you. In fact, but. I think, actually, we're running so late on time. Let's just drop initiative and just, like, if you want to do something in this scene, let's just fucking do it. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do is reach into my cloak okay. and pull from my cloak a small, exquisite chest. And then I pick up that chest and I throw it to the ground. A chest, also exquisite, but larger, emerges from another dimension. Is it like those Russian dolls? It pops Trishka. open. It's got everybody's weapons in it. Come eat. Everybody, come get some. Come get a taste. Okay, you are, re- you are rearmed. Merle, I think you reach into the chest and just, like, fling the axe at, at Magnus to catch it. While he's doing that, I throw Angus into the ring. <laughs> and the I'm axe getting him, him. I'm the getting him out of harm's way. Uh, That's fine. Uh, okay, the... It's beautiful. It's like four ninety nine uh, on Amazon. Taco, that was it. One of the uh, giant hands uh, reaches down and slaps you for uh, eight <gasps> points of damage. Oh, okay. I cast. <laughs> is it? My, I cast Bigby's you hand. You did kind of just go. Well, I know, but no, you, you said. No, you want this to happen. Okay. <laughs> you, you did say he slaps me, and I create a large hand of shimmering, translucent force in an unoccupied space. My hand is an object that is AC 20 and hit points equal to my hit point maximum. And uh, it has a strength of 26 plus 8 and a dexterity of 10. And I smack that fucker right back. (laughs) Come on. Say it. Say it. No. Say it. Please. (laughs) Please say it for daddy. Let him say it. Abraka, fuck you. I think, I think... I think you don't even roll. I think you just fucking astrally high five this thing so hard, this arm just explodes. And you hear from below you, you hear a, a really angry, deep voiced scream. Okay, good. Uh, you guys want to do anything? Yeah, I do. I'm going to start charging up uh, the stands towards Merrick okay. uh, to two handed attack him. Okay. And I want to do it as like a jumping attack. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure. Great. I just do it? Yeah, roll d20. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll take that. That's uh, because I have real splitter black plus nine is 21. Yeah, that's definitely good enough. Uh, uh, super quick, just a side note, I have one hit point left, so if anything happens to Ch- <laughs> let's let's keep an eye on Chaboy, okay? <laughs> and I do. Was that directed at me? Uh, I do 11 points of damage. Generally speaking, I have one hit point. 
What'd you do? 11 points of damage. Uh, okay, that does not uh, kill Merrick, but it is enough to uh, uh, send the orb flying uh, up and into the air. Um, and it looks like it's about to fall, and uh, it just kind of bounces as it lands, like it doesn't shatter. Uh, and it bounces really, really high up. Uh, and and in, uh, a, a, a spectral hand appears and grabs it out of the air. I hit it with the ladder for my second attack of my action. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what are you hitting? The, uh, the orb. Okay. Uh, what would that be a check of? Just a ladder attack? <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, that would end up being a 15. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, you... <laughs> You see, you see Merrick reach out and you see this red uh, mage hand uh, reach out to try to grab the orb as it flies away from him. And you just kind of smack it away from him. Uh, and it's flying far away. And then you see a blue mage hand appear and grab it out of the air and suck it back to the ring. And Angus is holding it. Yeah! yeah! And he's holding his wand out. That's my boy! That's my boy! My beautiful magic boy! He says, uh, what do I do? And he's like running around the ring as he's four. Angus, like, keep stopping. away. What does that mean? Just like we do with you with your books. Okay, Merle, Merle, make a, Merle, he throws the ball at you. Make a dexterity throw. A dexterity, it's okay. Doing Roll great. 20. Okay. Don't break the mo. It's, uh, 11. 11. Eleven and no, I have a zero. Yep. Model. Zero, eleven. Zero, eleven. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's good. It's kind of clumsy, but you managed to catch it with one hand, and all of a sudden, these four hands are now slapping uh, towards you as you hold this orb. What do you do? Oh uh, well, <laughs> give what, it to. What this, do you, do you, you have one. Shouldn't I? Shouldn't I heal him? Yeah. Why he, start now? Can he toss it as a free action? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think so. Toss it to the guy with the fork. Oh. Now, hold on. No, 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 no. This orb is so big, there is absolutely no way I'm going to let this happen. That's what I thought when he took the blazing challenge at BW3s, <laughs> but he still did it. No. That's a true uh, story Merle. that I'll tell you all about later. Merle, what are you doing? I look at him, and I, as a free action, say... I can't die. <laughs> Literally, I can't die. Don't worry about me. I live longer than this. Throw, the the, Ma- the Magus woman says, throw it to me. Throw it to me. Trust me. I toss it to Marie. Yeah! She catches it, and she holds it in her hand for a second. And then she eats it. And she says... <laughs> you should have eaten this stuff. <laughs> this is delicious. She you guys fucked up. She says, Magnus, I... Uh, I really like your costume. It looks, it looks really cool, and I like your character, and I think it's really well developed out. And as she says that, the orb starts to glow a little bit less, and the hands kind of recoil in pain. Oh, I see. And then she tosses it to Taco. Okay. She says, she says you don't understand. Wanton violence and destruction is what summons Garagos. The only thing that can put him back in the realm of banishment is the opposite of that. Okay, we okay. can do violence. No, I can do this. Um... All the spells I cast tonight worked super good, and they were really dope, no. and I, it was awesome. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. <laughs> Toss uh, me the orb. Angus! That was fucking great. So thank you, sir. It's nice, to, it's nice to get positive reinforcement from you for literally the first time ever in my life. Don't get used to it. And as you say that, the, uh, the, the hands ceasing the... or uh, sensing the, the fucking huge... Uh, uh, what, a, what a sacrifice. What a huge that sacrifice was. that was. The hands actually recoil a lot, and the ball is now glowing like half as bright as it was before. Uh, Pass me the rock. <laughs> uh, actually, Taco. Oh, that's only a nine. You're probably good. <laughs> okay, yeah, one swings at you, and you just kind of jump out of the way about it. I do have to pee, so if I need to die, it's so, fine. Yeah. <laughs> pass, that, pass that rock, actually. We're almost... Do uh, I... Can oh. I heal his ass? Yeah. Don't, I, I, it's a waste of energy. I don't die. Like, because we live... You, okay. So we're doing a story right now, after, and it takes place after this story, and I'm in it. So, like, 
I can't die. Uh, pass you that. died like seven times in the last Marie, month. Marie yells, pass the rock, pass the rock, pass the rock. Okay, I pass it to Magnus. All right. Do I just catch it? Yeah, you got it. Okay. Uh, it's been a pleasure fighting with you, Clark. You are a worthy opponent. He is, like, furious right now when you say that to him. He's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm huge and big. You've almost killed me, like, six times just doing things you want me to do. But I also know that you have a good heart. I don't. I, I promise. I'm a big... I'm a big... Oh, I, I see what we He stands up. Ri- he, he gets rigid again. He goes, thank you, Magnus. I really wanted to hear that. <laughs> I throw him the rock. He grabs the rock and he says, What do you think about me? Since the day the three of you came into my lives, I have been enriched in a way that I... Ah! He stands up rigid again and he goes, uh, 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 um, I think he just goes to attack Taco, actually, while holding this rock. What? I haven't healed him yet. Uh, 11 versus AC. I got 13. All right, but he is still holding this orb, uh, and these hands look like they're, they're maybe regenerating a little bit. What do you do to get the orb away from him? Dad, cast something. Okay. I cast Zone of... G- <laughs> no, I love it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. No, I love no, it. no. No, do it. Didn't do that shit. I cast Zone of Truth. <laughs> you cast Zone of Truth, and Clark, still in, like, rage mode, is just like... I just love you guys so much. <laughs> I've never had a friend before, and I, I know that you've taken advantage of me a lot, but I can also sense the good in you, and I just want to say, I think you're the best dudes I've ever met, and do you want to go take a trip to Aspen with me? <laughs> My Actually, dad, that sounds great. My dad has a cabin in Fantasy Aspen, and I think we'd have a really great weekend there together. <laughs> Your face is beat red right now. I've been screaming for a while. So and what as, happens as to the orb? The, the orb is just like dimming and dimming, and the arms are just shriveling up and, and receding back into the ground. Uh, and I think as he just goes on and on, and actually it was sweet at first, but then it gets maybe a little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> he goes on and on, and then finally the hands just disappear in a puff of red smoke. You saved the day! So I saved the day! God bless Zone of Truth! Pan bless Zone of Truth. Um, and uh, Clark is just standing there holding this orb and it turns to black smoke in his hands. And he's just standing there he's like... I just don't know what to do with you boys. I've... Here you go again. <laughs> My man. Yeah. Let's we met a, this out. We met a whole family of bugbears down in Lucas What's-His-Face's lab. They're totally cool. We saved them. They're fine. Do you want to go hang out with them? You're telling me my family still wants me back? After yes. Life? Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's... That's amazing. Thank you for tying up my storyline like this. <laughs> and I think as the as the last of the uh, the red hands sort of uh, disintegrates and the, the the portals they were popping out of shut close and the, the black orb disappears. I think there's like a shock wave of force that comes out from the ring that knocks up some some popcorn and dis, uh, discarded signs in a whirlwind. Uh, and uh, a, a gigantic Battle Fest Supreme Champion Finals uh, banner falls from the ceiling slowly. Like Jurassic, the last shot of Jurassic, like Jurassic, yeah. Park, Jurassic Park. And you hear a, you hear a heavy metal clunk uh, come from the stage. Oh, uh, one of the hands grabs Merrick and drags him to hell as it goes back there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Merrick just a, excuses himself. You hear a heavy metal clunk uh, in the middle of the ring, and you see the title belt laying there. And I put it on. And, well, Jess actually comes up into the she stage. She left. And she says, uh, well, you boys never cease to amaze. That could have gone real south, south real fast. Thanks for the help. But as for the title belt, a duo can compete in the Supreme Champion Finals, but only one of them can take home the belt. As she reaches for it, I put my foot down. She actually says, uh, yeah, why don't we fight for it? And then I, I want a fucking, like, Rocky II freestyle. Yeah! 
straight, like, ba 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 ba. That was the episode of The Adventures. Thank you. Thank you all so much. You've been, like, fucking incredible. Uh, there's posters outside. They're so good. Thank you, Gary, for the posters. You can get them out there. And uh, that's it. We that's love it. you. We love you. Thank you. Bye. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. I'm Biz. And I'm Teresa. And we host the weekly comedy podcast, One Bad Mother. We celebrate our moments of parenting genius. As well as our failures. Just like, we're going to have hot dogs. And I'm like, no, we're having fun. Everybody loves hot dogs. Yeah. And it just like smashes that thing right on my chest. And then I'm just Uh, crying in the middle of like kid space while people are like literally dancing with their children. Parenting can be sad and painfully funny at the same time. So join us each week as we admit that this is hard, but we're getting really good at it. Find us at MaximumFun.org or wherever you download podcasts. Do you live in the fictional city of Chicago? Do you love amazing podcasts like Max Fun's own Lady to Lady, Minority Corner, and Bullseye? Do you enjoy insightful interviews with talented actors and comedians like Dwayne Kennedy and Andre Royo? Don't miss your chance to be part of podcast history by attending the first ever Chicago Podcast Festival. Lady to Lady and Bullseye take the stage on November 17th, and Minority Corner performs on November 18th. Tickets are on sale right now. Visit MaximumFun.org for more information and to grab your ticket today. Right now.